my channel. So today's video is going to be a really exciting video and I know that it is only June, July time but obviously the summer is a really, really important time for preparing to go back to uni and obviously with all the uncertainty surrounding the situation and how it's going to be in September and October, I want to do a few videos over the summer intermittently about how to prepare to go back to uni and things. I did a video last year called 10 things I wish I'd known before I went to uni and I'll leave that one down below because that was after my first year of university but today I wanted to do a second sort of instalment of that of other little things that I think I've learned and also things that I think you should take with you to uni because I have also got a video saying what I packed but that doesn't show like all of the things that I think you should pack so this is basically a follow-on video if you will. I'm also going to do a video reviewing my second year so do be like sure to look out for that but this is just like a general reflection on uni rather than specifically second year because obviously st second year was a bit of a weird one in terms of you know like global pandemics and what have you. So this video is very kindly sponsored by Unite Students and I've worked with them before and they are the leading provider of student accommodation in the UK. They have accommodation in 22 different cities up and down the country and they also house over 50,000 students. So their aim is to provide students with a home for success, whether that's just because of their facilities, because of the support that they offer, or even the app that they have that allows you to meet your housemates and your neighbours before you even go to uni. Obviously the whole global situation is so uncertain right now but Unite students actually cancelled all of their final term rents for their students whilst this pandemic was going on so you know that you're in safe hands and that they're working to make it as secure and safe as possible so I know that the anxieties are probably running really high right now about going to university in September but we will get through it. So I'm going to show you five items that I think that I wish I'd have taken to uni my first term that I didn't take enough of or didn't take full stop. And then I'm also going to give you five other tips, sort of little more specific ones than my last video of things that I've recently learned or learned over my time at uni that I think you should also know. As I said, my main university tips, like my overarching big ones, you can go and watch down in the description. That's if you want to find out some additional advice on going to university then Unite Students actually have a blog called The Common Room so I will leave that in the description down below if you want to go and check that out. I'll leave everything that you need to go and check out Unite Students anyway down below but yes let's get on with the video. So the first thing that I wish that I had taken more of in my first year of university were friends <laughs> were friends <laughs> right were photos of friends and family so I didn't really take that many photos with me in first year if you look at my second year I have photos all over my room like I have a big pin board full of photos and they were all over my shelves like they were everywhere and I wish that I'd done that in first year because obviously moving away from home is like such a scary experience and I think that especially with everything that's going on it's nice to remind you that you are loved and you have people at home who are like rooting for you and looking out for you and so you can get really really cheap frames from places like Tesco or B&M um, I believe this frame was like £1.50 um, and it's like really really pretty and it's just nice to have photos of your friends so you remember where you came from and also you know that they're sort of there like does that sound really cheesy but you, you just see them and you think oh no like no matter how hard it gets at uni at least I've got people around the next thing is a hot water bottle this is a spongebob one I, I do have a blue fluffy one but I cannot find it anywhere I think I might have left it at university which will become a recurring theme in this video because half my stuff is still at university um but whether you're ill whether you're just alone whether it's a time of the month you're stressed you're cold you're sad anything like there was no instance where a hot water bottle made the situation worse and I think that this is definitely something that I would seriously recommend you bring because especially in the first term of uni when it's cold and it's wet and it's all a bit dingy I really 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 wish that I'd have bought um, a hot water bottle and I had to borrow my friends when I had the flu uh, oh my gosh I had the flu in first term of my first year and it knocked me for actual six like I couldn't eat for days and this was a lifesaver um Sneaker gave me one and oh the mems the mems but yes hot water bottle <laughs> The next one is one that I annoyingly can't show you because <laughs> it's at uni, but it's a lavender spray. So I use the one by This Works. I believe I'll put a picture of it on the screen. And basically you spray this over your pillow um, and it really helps you sleep. I literally in second year found this an absolute godsend it's the tiniest thing that you can just pack in your suitcase or get from boots when you get there but it means that whenever you're feeling like really anxious or just like struggling to get to sleep or have a nap even or even if you're just sat at your desk like you can get like a roll-on version of it as well and those are so so useful for me i found that when i was having like a really difficult time especially during first term i wish that i'd had that lavender spray because it really just 
it just mellows you, it mellows you out and that is what you need slash deserve in your first term of university. The next one is also one that I can't show you because once again I left them at university thinking that I'd be going back but here we are two months later and still in the same room. Anyway, um, and it's LED lights. So whether this is like an LED light pole, which is what I had, I'll put a picture on the screen, or the strip lights, um, which I also had on my dash dashboard, all my days, I'm thinking about YouTube, um, which I also had on my notice board. I personally found that these were really, really good because the lights, like the coloured lights can really help to regulate your mood. So for me, having like blue tone lights can like help me sleep, whereas green would like energise me. I would avoid red because red makes you hungry, but I personally found it was really nice, especially when the evenings draw in and it gets a little bit darker, to have like, I don't know, some sort of ambiance in your room. And I'm definitely, definitely, definitely taking um, those with me when I go abroad as well for my year abroad because I think sometimes it can just be really nice to have something that regulates your mood a little bit for you, you know? This is one that you're actually gonna be like, Eve, like this might just be you. Um, but I don't think it is because basically the first time I bought loads of jeans, loads of going out clothes, loads of clothes to wear like around town, what have you. But what I didn't bring enough of were comfy clothes, joggers, jumpers, things that are warm, fluffy snuggly right as i've said with the hot water bottle and stuff like the first term can be quite difficult as the nights are definitely closing in it gets dark it gets cold it's rainy and so you don't have that like summer vibe and i found myself like quite uncomfortable at uni because i just didn't have enough joggers i didn't have enough loungewear to just sort of like hang around accommodation in um not gonna lie this video is making me very nostalgic and i'm getting a bit emotional because i just miss uni so much um and i've only got one year left of it but whatever um but basically i would really really recommend like for as every pair of jeans you take take a pair of joggers or some leggings or something because you will have those days where you just want to sit and watch netflix and if you have to do that in jeans honey so those are the five things that i sort of would bring to university but now to go on to the five tips that I would suggest um, at university. So the first one is when you do your weekly food shop or whatever, or whenever you're going food shopping, really do make a conscious effort as much as ready meals and processed foods are really, really quick and convenient. And I am the first one to say that when I'm at uni, I live off ready meals, I live off processed foods. Really make an effort to get some fruit and veg. Right, this sounds so basic, because um, I think a lot of you are gonna be thinking, Eve, like that's such a basic tip, but I think that when all of the craziness of uni kicks in, you're very much drawn to like the alcohol shelf, sweets, chocolates, things, because you're excited, because for the first time in your life, you're like, not at home, so you're not just eating what your parents bring in, and I know for me, I was like, oh, I want some Kipling cakes, like, oh, I want all of this, but I would really recommend like punnets of raspberries and blueberries, bananas, are a godsend for just giving you enough energy to get through the day um and also peppers and um, lots of salad just to try and make sure that when you're having a meal like say even if you have a ready meal lasagna if you've just got some salad to go with it just because genuinely you don't think it makes that much of a difference on a day-to-day -day basis but honestly like long term the vitamins and minerals that you get from sort of not processed foods will just sort of a like improve your mood and be improve your stamina and it will like get you through the term a lot better i find that when i eat better like you know you don't really notice it on a day-to-day -day basis but when you actually think about it it really does impact the way that you live your life my next tip and this is one that i swear by now um because it's expensive never buy your books first hand right never never do it i did this for all of first year um thinking like oh like you know, I may as well just get all keen on it and whatever. And I'm really fortunate that I could afford to do that. But they were so expensive. But for me personally, because I do literature, I don't have textbooks that cost like hundreds and hundreds of pounds. But at the start of university, they tend to do textbook drop-off sessions where you can go and buy second-hand ones. If you go and watch Lydia... Lydia Violetta's first vlog, I think of Leeds, she did the same thing. And you can also get them off Abe books. There are Facebook groups where people swap university tech books. Like, dig around because when it comes to, fair enough, when it comes to text that you're studying, like, you can get them quite cheap. But I would really suggest getting used. Like, I, this year, have mainly got used books. And honestly, there's no difference in the quality. It's the same words on the page. It just costs a lot less money. Next tip is work can wait. Now, before... Everyone gets the guns out at me and says, Eve, you're paying £9,000 a year to learn. You're paying £9,000 a year to get an education. Yes, you are. And you should work hard. And that is really important. But also, when I look back at first year and I look back at second year, what do I remember? 
I remember times where somebody's come into my room and I'm midway through a translation and they've gone, do you want to go to the pub? And I've gone, yeah. You have to obviously weigh it up. If your deadline's in like two hours, then I'm not suggesting that you sack off your work entirely. But you know how sometimes you have a deadline like three days away and you know that you have enough time to do it. And so you're in this mood where you're like, I can't go out, I've got this deadline. But you know realistically that you could get it done in a lot less time than you've got. But because you've not filled your time with anything else, you're just dragging it out, right? So it takes you like so much longer to do that one piece of work. I personally found for me, when somebody asked me to go out or like asked me to go to a talk or a chat, I found that that actually made me more efficient in my work at times because sometimes over the weekend, for example, I would have an essay due on a Monday and I'd have all of Friday, Saturday, Sunday where I'd be like, no, I'm not going out, I've got this essay to do, but was I actually doing the essay? No, I was procrastinating. So actually me going to the pub on a Friday night meant that I woke up on Saturday, A, like charged up and having had some good mems to like look back on and B, like a bit more focused because I had like a set amount of time. Do you know what I mean? So basically work can wait a little bit, like weigh up your deadlines versus experiences and remember that you are paying 9,000 pounds to learn, but you're also paying 9,000 pounds for the experience, so yeah the next tip is referencing right when it, if you write an essays right if you do a humanity subject never ever 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 leave your reference until the last minute don't do it don't put insert reference here because when you are mid essay crisis and it's like 2 a.m and you finally finish your essay and then you realize you have to go through and do a chicago referencing bibliography it's just not worth the stress, love. It's just not worth the stress. I honestly cannot recommend, I know it's annoying when you're doing it, but do your bibliography as you go, or even before you start. Like, I don't even know, like, it depends on what you, what system you use. For me, if I've referenced a critic in my essay, I will put the footnote in, in full, at the bottom. And this actually goes on to my next tip, so I feel like this is gonna be a hybrid tip, basically, for the last one. With citations, you don't have to type it all out yourself for a lot of things. If it's on Google Books, you they have a citation system. If it's on JSTOR, they have a citation system. My university library system has a citation system. Once you decide which referencing you're going to use, or you know which referencing your teacher wants you to use, you can just copy and paste the reference. Like, you literally don't need to do the whole, like, Kenneth... Kenneth Stevens, um, XYZ title in XYZ journal, blah, 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 edited by, you know, release date, publisher, whatever. You can literally use systems like Google Books and JSTOR and I think academia.edu as well and ProQuest and all of them. Find the site, this item tool. Yeah, you might have to make some minor tweaks, but it saves you so much time. So that is all of this video. To, uh, that is all. Blah, 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 blah. That is all for this video today. It was just like a really chill sort of like extra things that I've learned because I felt like these were ones that I can't live without now. Like these are tips and things I can't live without. So I wanted to make a new video for it. Thank you so much to Unite Students for sponsoring this video. As I said, the blog will be in the description along with all of the information about their accommodation. So do go down there if you want to find out more. And yeah, I'll see you very soon with a new video. Bye guys. Mwah. Thank you.